Hi everyone, this is a quick start tutorial on setting up your Kitbash 3D Parisian Kit for 3ds Max and Redshift Renderer. We'll cover relinking textures, setting up a simple light, and rendering. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is download the Parisian Kit for 3ds Max and Redshift. For this video, I'm going to save it to my desktop. So now that we downloaded the file, we're going to unzip it. I'm going to put it in the default Redshift directory. Let's give it a second here. Almost done. Now we can see the 3ds Max file, and we can also see the KB3D textures file. And in here is all our PBR textures for the scene. We have to keep that in mind because when we relink it, we need to go to this directory. Let's open 3ds Max. OK, I am now going to load that file that we just unzipped. It's on my desktop. Redshift, here it is. Open. Give it a minute. OK, it looks like it's loaded now. And I am going to maximize this window. And the next thing I'm going to do is relink the textures. Go to Files, Reference, Asset Tracking Toggle. Click that. Select the first bitmap. And while holding down Shift, scroll down and select the last one. It will select everything in between. Now you can see that the path here is to the K drive and we know that it's on my desktop. So what we're going to do now is right click and go to set path. We're going to browse to that directory where we unzipped it. Desktop, Redshift, KB, 3D textures. Select that and click use path. Click OK. Now we wait. OK, now it looks like the path has been set for all these textures. So let's uh, confirm that. Let's close this. Now before we can view the textures properly, we need to set up a light. Let's open up the Scene Explorer. And we see that we do not have any lights or any cameras in here. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to click the light, go to Redshift, and to keep it simple, we're just going to use a Redshift Sun. So click that. We're going to click and drag. This is our target. And we're going to raise the sun up. Let's go to the Modify tab. And now we're going to click Add Redshift Physical Sky. And what this does is going to provide a fill light for us, which is pretty much an environment light. Uh, dome, which is placed in the environment and effects panel. And you can see that it says daylight environment, redshift, physical sky. Now we're going to go to IPR render, which is their preview render, and have it load up. And let's take a look. OK. So what I'm going to do right now is we're just going to select one of the buildings here and hide the rest. We're going to use Isolate, and we're going to zoom in on it. Now we have this harsh shadow going on here. And I think that is mainly because we do not have our render settings set correctly. So we're going to need to go to the render settings. GI, and we have no bounce or no uh, global illumination actually happening right now. So we want to go to primary as brute force and secondary as brute force too. And we're going to have three bounces, which is fine. And now we have our scene lit. 
So here's our initial render. One thing that I think that we need to change is the window. Right now it's a white window color and windows don't tend to be white. They tend to be reflective and darker. So right now we're going to go into the material editor and uh, change that white color to a darker color. So first thing we're going to do is go to the slate material editor and you can go to that from this uh, button up here. Material editor or press the M key. And we have nothing. And that's because we have to load it. So we're going to go to get all C materials and everything pops up. The glass should be one of these right here. Here it is. So what I'm going to do is take a look at what is in the diffuse channel. And it looks like we have a white texture, which is not the color we want. So I'm going to unhook it. Hit glass, and then we're going to use a dark color. Right now, it's completely black, so it should update. Okay, it looks completely black, as that's not a good color to use. So I'm going to turn it up a little bit to maybe 5. And it'll give me a shade of gray. And that looks better. That's it for the glass. Now we want to set up a render, so how do we do that? So we go to the Redshift setup right here. And we're going to change the output to HDTV. And we're going to go to Render Output. And we're going to go to the desktop to the folder we created for Redshift. I'm going to create a new folder called Renders. And I'm going to call this bash setup dot jpeg click save and now we're going to do a full render instead of preview we're going to do the full render with this button I'm noticing there's some noise in here and I really don't want that. I want it to be a little bit cleaner. So let's go back and examine our render settings. There is a feature in experimental option called enabled automatic sampling, which is great. What that does is that it uses a noise threshold to decide when to stop rendering. And after we set that, we go to Output. And we have the Minimum and Max Sampling. Now, these two are actually ignored. They're not really useful anymore. They're actually, the only thing that's important right now is the Adaptive Error Threshold. And 0 0.01 is a fairly clean uh, sampling uh, threshold. So let's go with that. Hit Render. Yes, we want to save it to that directory. That's it, and everything is now clean. Thank you very much for watching this video. Until next time. It looks like you've reached the end of the video. If you like our video, please remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. It helps a lot. Thanks.